Hello, welcome to my review of SlimCat. To note, this is the stable release of SlimCat, which was built on March 31st, 2014. As you can see here, um, I'm still, while I'm testing it, I'm on the, the, the end of this using the furnace kernel um, 1.8.1, so you can see that there. This is the LG G2 D800, as you can see there. All right. Let's talk about kernels real quick before we dive too deep into this. The stock kernel performs just fine. I had no issue with the stock kernel. Uh, benchmarks indicate it's a little slower than some of the other AOSP-based ROMs that are out, but honestly, in day-to-day -day use, you really don't notice it, and it did not affect gameplay. So, uh, not a big deal. On the Dr. 87's kernel, you do notice, uh, version 7, of course, you do notice a uh, pretty significant speed difference, and you do notice the difference between going from Dalvik to Art which, by the way, had no issues at all with this ROM. Uh, while using Furnace Kernel, uh, it's very similar to Dr. 87's, but the benchmarks don't show the performance gains. So, uh, unlike Dr. 87's where benchmarks did better, uh, Furnace, the benchmarks perform about on par with what you get from the stock kernel. The only other issue I've noticed on the Furnace Kernel, which just kind of cropped up here recently, is the Bluetooth which I'm sure a reboot would fix that because uh, I was just using Bluetooth earlier without any issues. I also denote with this ROM, I am testing out the new AOSP KitKat modems for the D800. Uh, well, they're released for many variants. Dr. 87 has released them. They're AOSP KitKat modems that are from the stock modem. So there are newer releases, they got some newer things in them. Uh, I, nobody's really come out and said exactly what is there other than some updates. Maybe you notice a difference, maybe you don't. Uh, I haven't had issues with signal in the first place. So for me, I haven't noticed any difference. Uh, but I do have it installed and it's working without any issue whatsoever. In rotation does work. Let's get into settings here. I'm going to advance. Um, there's a lot of simplicity here. That's pretty nice. There's not a lot of features um, that you might be looking for, uh, but it has one that a lot of people are looking for. And we'll talk about that here in a second. As you can see here in your face, you got your icon changes, your your standard fare of icons here, your dotted circle, your circle percentage, etc. Uh, colors, animation speeds, color normal, and color when it's uh, charging. Notification and quick settings. Again, you see a lot of the standard. Um, configuration settings that, you, that you've come to know from most of these other ROMs including the tiles and layout here. Okay, quick pull down, smart pull down, quick collapse, style. This is where you can change your row. And of course the background where you can change the image. As you can see I have a custom image there. Status bar. Uh, this is where you change with things in the clock and date, how it shows up. You got some brightness control where you can change the brightness by sliding across up here. Did not really use that. I don't, the auto brightness on this ROM works very well. Um, it seems to adjust pretty quickly and it finds the right amount of brightness. So it, that's actually very nice. And for a stable release, you kind of expect something like that. Global menu is actually your power menu. That's what global menu is. So anything you add in here is going to show up when you long press the power button. And you can change the colors as well. I like the white. I'm a big fan of the KitKat white. I like this white. Navigation bar. I disabled the navigation bar because I am using Pi. This is Slim Pi. Okay. And here we got Slim Pi, but again, back here in the navigation bar, you can change the dimensions. You can change the targets and the buttons the visibility of when the menu button appears, etc. You can change all that. Uh, Slim Pie, here we go. Got your buttons. Primary, secondary buttons. Style and dimensions. Trigger options. And of course menu visibility. I found the pie, all with the Slim Pie always came up when I wanted it to. I did never get it by accident, uh, so it's a really good implementation here. Here we have Slim Center. This is where you'll find the location for your OTAs and that's the OTA section. So one more time, this kind of functions like what you would normally have to use Titanium Backup for to delete apps. So 
So that's kind of nice. I didn't actually go in there and delete anything because there's nothing for me to delete. Uh, in my testing, this is a very stable ROM. Now let's go down here to sounds. There's not going to be any sound packs in here, which is a, an Omni ROM feature that's found its way into so many other features, but neither is Omni Switch. Omni Switch is also not uh, natively available with this ROM, of course. Uh, if you're familiar, you can download the Omni Switch application and utilize it. It is pretty cool, it's a different way to swing things around, but the reason why Omni Switch isn't in here is because of Slim Recents, and I will show you that. I can go ahead and show you that now, actually. There you go, there's your Slim Recents. It's very nice, it's very simple. Um, you kind of get used to it. You kind of get used to it. It's my favorite. Eh, Verdict's still out, but it works. It's fast, it's quick, it's easy to read. It's very, very quick to look at. No, oh, okay. This is this is easy. Slide to get it away. Click it to open it. Click it. Again. You can uh, slide, see the preview. Uh, if you have multiple, you only see that one preview, and the rest of it's slimmed down. So you don't have a whole lot to look at there. It's pretty nice. If you're looking for quiet hours here, it's going to be in the advanced options. So here's your quiet hours. Some other settings here, as you can see. And the rest of these sound options are the standard affair that you uh, have come to know. Another place that's a little bit different is in your displays where you'll find the wake up on, I'm sorry, the volume rocker to wake. This is something that's not usually located in the display section on most ROMs, but it is here. Everything else again is standard. Let's go down here. Everything else here, nothing really new to look at. You get to the advanced, it's just like some of the other ROMs I've tested. You got your super user and your media scanner here. Now, let's talk about this super user. When you first install this ROM, either flash super user, uh, super issue, uh, the upgrade chain fire, or uh, once you get it installed and you get it booted up, give it a good 10 minutes, let it set, and you start playing around to get it set up, go into your advanced options and click on super user and get it set up, get it activated. Otherwise, you're going to you're gonna think you don't have super user access and then you have to go back and flash it anyway. So, keeping it easy, just go into the settings. Uh, I personally didn't look at it that far and I went back into recovery and just flashed. Super issue, didn't take any time at all, wasn't a big deal and it worked. Uh, however, when I went back to the forms, that's what's actually in the OP. So, for somebody who reads every single page, I don't know how I missed that. Uh, but I did and uh, it was an easy fix, not a big deal at all. I want to talk about the free RAM. Let's go to the home screen here. I did notice that uh, on every kernel I had some redraw, but on the first kernel it seems like I have a little bit more than uh, the others. 734, but I can tell you that uh, that's pretty low. I'm usually hanging around 800 or higher, uh, especially off a of fresh reboot. It hangs around 1.1, sometimes 1.2 gigs. Uh, after some usage, I'm seeing it around 800, but uh, 734 now, it's been up for quite some time. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, that's actually pretty low. I'm gonna get, I told you before that ART does work, it works no problem. Um, there is a noticeable speed difference between ART, between, between ART and Dalvik. It's not just a placebo in this ROM. Uh, and the fact that there is no warning is kind of nice. It's just like uh, vanilla Android when you switch over, it, there's no, oh, warning. This, you know, Slim Cat doesn't support. And in this case, it just says you're going to switch your libraries over, no problem, done. Uh, and this happened pretty quick, although, in my experience, what I've learned to do with this, believe it or not, is put my phone on an ice block or an ice pack uh, while it's switching all the apps over. Just easier that way. Because uh, it does tend to get a little hot. I want to talk about the Play Store when I first installed this ROM. Uh, there were some issues with the Play Store and it working. Uh, as far as me getting all the apps, it was selling me some apps like Candy Crush and uh, some other apps were not available for this device. So I did have to install Exposed before I did my art testing, of course, and uh, use the All Apps uh, with the 480 DPI trick in it, and that worked. Uh, but the Play Store, you know, it's just it's one of those things that neither ROM has that problem, but what it does. It's, it's a pretty easy fix. Don't get discouraged. Um, but I did have to fix it, and then when I was done, I just uninstalled Exposed. And uh, I don't usually use Exposed with AOSP-based ROMs. Just I just don't usually tweak them that much. Usually, most of these ROMs come with enough tweaks in them that I'm not having to go get Gravity Box. I, I save my Exposed time for LG-based ROMs. One nice thing about this I want to talk about is the DPI that it installs. 
It installs at 370 DPI. I cannot praise that enough. That is a nice DPI. I'm always between 360 and 380 anyways. And uh, to have it already installed at 370 means that in the future, if I were to upgrade from here, if I were to do a dirty flash, if you will, instead of come back in here, once it's done, let it cool off, change the DPI, reboot it, and do all my home pages over again, I'm good to go. That's very nice. So I do like that. Of course, that just works for me, but I keep my DPI on that area anyways. So because I had a 370, I just left it there, and I found that it worked very well. didn't have any problems at all. Now we'll go ahead and talk about the camera. I did a couple quick shots, and it's just your standard AOSP camera. The color's a little, make it a little better here when I added some more light. The same light that I'm using for the video here. You see the colors did get better. You got your reds, your browns. This is, of course, in my office where I'm taping these. And this is where I'll be taping uh, these probably from now on. I got a lot of things going on at work that are just going to keep me from being able to do this on my lunch breaks. Let me go ahead and queue up the benchmark pages for you. So we can talk about benchmarks and battery performance. All right. No. Nope. Eighteen hours, fifty-four minutes off the charger. We're still at thirty-three percent battery life. You can see here. I got three hours and twelve minutes of screen on time, so I could have easily squeaked another hour and a half out of that, most likely. Um, if you kind of look at the bar here, it kind of leveled out uh, with the way I was using the phone, so I could have easily gotten four hours and forty-five minutes with this initial usage. This is what your bench is from the install, 7,882. This is what it is with the Dr. 87's kernel on art, 11,987. Scroll through over here, show you just how hot it got while it was doing the benchmark, when it, once it finished the benchmark, I'm sorry, 64 degrees Celsius. This is a bench on the furnace kernel at uh, 9,919. Here we are at nine hours and nine minutes off the charger with three hours and 13 minutes of screen on time and 40% battery left. So again, we're still looking at around four hours and 45 minutes roughly of screen on time that we probably could have gotten out of this on a different kernel. This is just showing the wake locks. I did disable Google now. And this is the stock ROM again, but this time on art, 8,963. So we're kind of breezing through here with this review, um, trying to keep it short. Uh, I had to tape this a day early because I need to do some testing for FlexROM uh, 2. Point, Cloudy Flex, if you will. I'm sorry, Cloudy Flex 2.0. I'm going to be doing some testing for that to get that ROM up and going and get the review going for that one because I'm going to be testing it early and getting bugs worked out. So I want to get this out here. I got a really good impression from it. Like I said, I'm pretty impressed with how stable it is and with the problems they have cropped up. They're very small and easily managed. Thanks, Google. I guess. A2DP is also a place where this has been great. From the moment it installed, when I synced it with my Ford Touch, I got my text messages, it did metadata. Kia Uvo, metadata, no problem. Streaming was quick, fast. I mean, it was really impressive for an AOSP-based ROM, so it was a breath of fresh air, no, no time delay, there was nothing, it just worked. Uh, on the form for the ROM, this ROM is brought to us by Arcania, Arcadina, I think, uh, is how you say his name. On a note, read the OP again before you install this ROM. It's got only 140 pages at this point, which is 1,465 posts at making this video. That's not really that much. And the form is pretty friendly. Um, I will say this though, uh, I've been reading this form from the day I started doing these re video reviews and I went back to the very first page and went through and stayed caught up, uh, stayed subscribed to it. I waited this long on purpose for the stable build before I did this video. So I was very excited when I saw it out that I was going to go ahead and jump on this and do it. But if you have an issue, use a program. There's a program right over here called Syslog that you can make, that you can use to make um, uh, log cats. So you can help the developers improve, make improvements and fix issues with their ROMs. If you found this review useful, please like the video. If you have any questions that I haven't answered, 
Hey, ask away. As you can see from my history and my forms, I try to stay very active. I try to help. I keep baseline backup so I can always jump back and answer your questions in case I don't have them in my notes. Thanks again.